prior to the unification of a single Egypt. Most Egyptians lived under the rule of one of two distinct kingdoms. Upper and Lower Egypt. But how did both the kingdoms got unified? And by who? Who was the first pharaoh of Egypt? To know about the battle that shaped the unified Egypt, watch this video till the end. Before Egypt became a single country or empire, it was divided into Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. But what was considered as Upper Egypt and what was considered as Lower Egypt? The Nile River, which is a very sacred and important river to the Egyptians, flows from south to north, emptying into the Mediterranean Sea at the Nile Delta. The Nile River was called a teru, meaning river, in the ancient Egyptian language. The northernmost part of the Nile, being the end of the river, was referred to as Lower Egypt and the southernmost part of the Nile near the origins of the Nile, was called Upper Egypt. The Lower Egypt was one of Egypt's early kingdoms. It was known to the pharaohs as Tamehu meaning, land of the north, it was called Lower Egypt because it is the lower, or downstream, part of the Nile. It was known at the time as the Black Land, for the dark, fertile soil of the delta and the upper Egypt was known as the Red Land for the sun-baked desert sand, and was ruled by a king in a white crown whose symbol was a sedge, a kind of plant resembling tall marsh grass. The red crown symbolized Lower Egypt, the white crown, Upper Egypt, and the red and white double crown, a unified Egypt. The Narmer Palette, also known as the Great Hierakonpolis Palette or the Palette of Narmer, is a significant Egyptian archaeological find, dating from about the 31st century BC. It contains some of the earliest hieroglyphic inscriptions ever found. The tablet depicts the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt under the King Narmer. Who's Narmer? Narmer was an ancient Egyptian pharaoh of the early dynastic period. He was the successor to the proto-dynastic King Ka. Narmer was also known as Menes. Narmer is often credited with the unification of Egypt by means of the conquest of Lower Egypt by Upper Egypt. While Menes is traditionally considered the first king of ancient Egypt though there is some debate among the experts whether Narmer and Menes were different persons or not, many Egyptologists agree that both are different names referring to the same person. He was the first pharaoh of Egypt and the first ruler to unite Upper and Lower Egypt. Before unification, he was the king of Upper. He unified Lower and Upper Egypt through a massive battle across Egypt. The Narmer palette provides one of the earliest known depictions of the Egyptian king. The Egyptologist Bob Breyer has referred to the Narmer palette as the first historical document in the world. A large picture in the center of the palette depicts Narmer wielding a mace wearing the white crown of Upper Egypt on the left of the king as a man bearing the king's sandals, flanked by a rosette symbol. To the right of the king is a kneeling prisoner, maybe a person of royal birth, who is about to be struck by the king. Above the prisoner is a falcon, representing Horus, perched above a set of papyrus flowers, the symbol of Lower Egypt. The papyrus has often been interpreted as referring to the marshes of the Nile Delta region in Lower Egypt, or that the battle happened in a marshy area, or even that each papyrus flower represents the number 1000, indicating that 6000 enemies were subdued in the battle. Below the king's feet is a third section, depicting two naked, bearded men. They are either running or are meant to be seen as sprawling dead upon the ground. Here, Narmer is depicted at nearly the full height of the register, emphasizing his godlike status in an artistic practice called hierarchic scale, shown wearing the red crown of Lower Egypt, whose symbol was the papyrus. On the left, the king wears the crown of Upper Egypt and on the right, the king wears the crown of Lower Egypt. This shows how he was ruler of both. The intertwined necks of these two felines represent Egypt's unification. Archaeologically, some of the evidence of unification comes from the mixing of the traditions of each kingdom. The pharaohs of the United Egypt wore a double crown that combined the red and white crowns of Upper and Lower Egypt into one. Different regions of Egypt worshipped different set of gods. Religious belief changed over time as the importance of particular gods rose and declined, and their intricate relationships shifted. 
At various times, certain gods became preeminent over the others. The people of unified Egypt starting worshipping the pharaoh as an incarnation of the hawk god Horus, making Horus the first national deity to be fully embraced by both kingdoms together. After the unification of Lower and Upper Egypt, all the pharaohs held the title, Lord of the Two Lands. What other historical and mythological stories you want me to make a video about? Comment down your thoughts. Tap the thumbs up icon and subscribe to this channel. It helps me very much. I'll see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching.